I'm with Will Heffler and I would like to ask him about throughput accounting, or as we say in France, throughput accounting. Uh, and before we start, just want to make it clear that, uh, as everybody who knows a little of the subject well knows, it is not an accounting system at all. And more recently, Eddie Schragenheim has been talking, for instance, about throughput-based decision-making. So you've been using these things for a long time. Mm. Tell, me, tell me about throughput accounting. It's... Uh yeah, it's particularly within the the production environment is where I probably use it the most uh, because anytime we do um, operations, uh, production scheduling, the cost accountants uh, and the controllers are usually fairly um, interested in what is going on. Yeah. Okay, because you tend to throw at least in the beginning, it's easy to throw a lot of their metrics out of whack. Okay, because we're not driving for efficiency or utilization of every machine. It's we're about flow and trying to get work out at the at the end. Um, so there are a couple areas that we uh, that I've done a lot of work in whenever we do an implementation is making sure that we understand that the, um, uh, first of all, the decision making, how should we be making decisions uh, either on, on pricing or product mix? Because if you do a throughput analysis, uh, for instance, a throughput per constraint unit of, of, your, of your product offering, um, it's very unusual where I don't see a scenario where the things that they really thought they were making money on are really the things that they aren't and vice versa. So it's yeah. very quickly you can rationalize uh, your what you think are the good ones and the bad ones. Yeah. Uh, we've been in scenarios where we've dropped products. I've actually worked with small machine shops where we've actually gone back out to the customer and said, um, listen, we, we're rationalizing our product portfolio. We're not making these anymore. And by the way, these are going to be more expensive. Yeah, yeah it's, just, it's just the way it is. And in, in many of the cases, I've had the customer go, we were wondering when you were going to raise the cost on those things because we're so it's not always as big of a fight as as you might think. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other side is on the metrics aspect of it because if you can create real time metrics for the shop floor, uh, you know they don't. If you're working on the shop floor, it doesn't necessarily resonate with you. If you're working a machine on what the quarterly profit is or the the quarter to quarter profitability, but if I can see things like T divided by CU normalized, and if I can see throughput I, divided by throughput, constraint, sorry, divided unit. by constraint unit yeah. as a productivity metric and uptime and things like that, it's very easy for you to put up three or four different metrics in the yeah. shop floor every day, every week, and and um, throughput divided by operating expenses can be another one that we found useful because while our objective isn't to focus on cutting costs, but if you can have a ratio to show. You know, are we getting more for what we're spending? Or are we getting less for what we're spending? It can it can be a directional, uh, you know, indicator on are we making good decisions or making bad decisions. Okay. Um, one of the things that we run into, and, and General Motors ran into this um, years ago when Elliot Golder was doing the um, the distribution solution with them. One of the reasons that it didn't get rolled out further than it did was because of inventory losses on the income statement. Okay, if you're going to cut a billion dollars worth of inventory, yeah. uh, that's going to go somewhere. Yeah. Um, if you're looking at it from a pure accounting standpoint, expenses can only go one of two places. It's either going to go in the income statement as an expense, or it's going to go on the balance sheet capitalized in inventory. Um, so it's very easy to drive. The more inventory I make, the better my P&L is going to look because I'm bearing in expenses. And when you start cutting through that inventory, which we always strive to do, yeah, um, it, it can, <laughs> yes, you can have a very negative yeah. impact. So you need yeah, to be able to, that, yeah. yeah, you need to be able to explain that. And also you need to be able to um, reconcile or build a gap or the bridge between um, traditional cost accounting and throughput accounting. Because if I look at a throughput accounting income statement, which is what we try to have people use on their reporting and, and decision making, I can't use that to send to, to my accountant or my yeah. uh, bank. or right. So you have to be able to reconcile it back. And it's fairly right. simple, but you know it's usually the difference in inventory. Right. But uh, uh, You mentioned production uh, cases. Uh, I think less often, but uh, it can happen also in, in project management. Right now, very recently, we uh, implemented critical chain in the largest engineering to order and make to order company in the world. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we use the throughput accounting logic to look at their, their product portfolio and we came across exactly what you were talking about because they had big sophisticated machines the, the bottleneck was the engineering department mm -hmm. uh, designing the products and they had big complex machines that took thousands of hours and they had things, tiny little things that only took, they were fairly standard and only needed about 
four hours work. Mm. And uh, they were just about to get rid of that because according to traditional accounting, they were losing money on that stuff. Mm, and when sure. we did the, the calculations, they said, oh, well, uh, we, should, we should continue doing these little standard things because uh, uh, the throughput is, is good. Yeah, no, the, it, it's interesting, but it's, um, it, it can make a significant difference on their cash flow and their uh, profitability. It's, 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 uh, it, and what I always try to tell uh, every client I've worked with, I've tried to make the point to them that cost accounting is not the same thing as management accounting. Throughput accounting is a type of management Absolutely. accounting. Yeah. But somehow over the years, management accounting has become synonymous with, oh, synonymous yeah, with cost accounting. Even my managerial accounting books as a student was titled cost accounting. Hmm. So it's, 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 I, it, there are two words that keep cropping up uh, and creating a lot of damage. Accounting, mm. management. Accounting is, is it or not management decision making? Mm -hmm. uh, it can't be both. Uh, and, and the word cost, I mean, earned value is in fact earned cost. And uh, That's you know, very true. value is, is abused in all sorts <laughs> of strange places. And that, and that hurts because people end up thinking it. You know. Uh, I've had to explain several times to people that earned value is not value. Uh, mm -hmm. Value is something judged by the, the client, exactly. it, and it, that crops up everywhere. Anyway, it's uh, mm -hmm. it's a, still a, a strange, misunderstood killer in in, in 2017. So let's hope that uh, things evolve and people understand that you know that some of the figures they're looking at uh, don't mean what they think it means. And it's still a big problem. Anyway, thank you very much. Very good. Thank you.